All right, we're here. We're live. We're here to talk about hobby-related stuff. We're recently back from the New England Mordheim opened, and we're fortunate to be joined with one of the people who helped run and create all that. Nice to have you here. They go by name of No Clear Coat on Instagram. What's up, guys? Hey, Gage. Glad to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Did you get some more sleep? Because when I was talking to you that uh, Sunday at the event, you had said that you hadn't like gotten much more than four <laughs> no four hours of sleep over three days or something. I uh, after the event, we chilled at Steve's till very late again, and then <laughs> uh, went straight to work pretty much after two hours of sleep again. So I think I got a combined total of maybe eight hours, ten hours the whole weekend from Thursday to. Dang. To Monday. Well, it's over now. Yes, I will say <laughs> Monday, yesterday night, I uh, probably slept a good eleven hours straight. So today I feel <laughs> excellent. <laughs> uh huh. That's that's good. That's good. Well, um, maybe we could start like and just record a little thing talking about Nemo, just so we can, because we recorded a bunch of stuff at the <laughs> event with a bunch of people, but it'd be fun to get some you know some of your thoughts about the event as a whole but um yeah well, greg you wanna with a little preamble thing um yeah so i'm gonna start recording now like separate recording and then greg you can say whatever it is you think hey everybody this is greg i'm back this is now after the nemo 2023 event and we're here with Glick Gage. Fuck. I, I, Jesus Christ. We're going to start that. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. You can add an L in there. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> like, and I'll try not to say like all the time. But I. It's hard. It happens. Um, we're not good speakers. All right. So I'm going to record, like, start a new recording, and you can, you can have at it. Hey everybody, this is Greg. We're back again to talk about Nemo 2023. It's now after the event, and I'm pleased to say with us here is Gage, or no clear coat, who helped run the event. How are you doing? I'm living, man. We're here. We're live. Yeah. It's yeah. I after such an event, it's good I to hear you still. I talked to all the other hive scummers at the event for the podcast but i hadn't talked to you so this is the chance to rectify that so yeah, how do you, you and feel i about the whole thing like i think it went pretty well i you know man you and i got to talk a little bit off of uh off mic pretty much the whole time as uh we weren't playing but it i think it went flawless to be honest, I feel like all of the, the the panic attacks, all of the eleventh hour crunches, were worth it. I mean, it was one of the coolest experiences I've had in recent memory, and I wasn't even playing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, it it was it was really great. Like, it's in some sense hard to imagine that like you hadn't run like a more time event in the past, like with so much terrain and tables and so many cool people coming out like it yeah it just went really well like i felt the space was good there was it didn't seem super crowded and yeah it just it went so smoothly 20 of the 64 people didn't come or something that's why it didn't seem crowded yeah i, think, I suppose. yeah we had we had six registered dropouts but i think the uh the smoothness of the event really is a tribute to, to Steve's genius at just his last second uh, thought processes with all of these events that we've done so far. This is mm -hmm. <laughs> the third event that I've helped him with since, since knowing him and definitely the largest, but uh, the venue's great. He got it. I think a friend of a friend and it, the spot is cursed. As you guys saw, there's nothing else <laughs> around it. It's, it's just yeah. under a bridge. It's, it's terrible, but once you get inside, it's just a nice wide open area. Yeah, it's a nice, it's a nice space. I yeah. Didn't even think the spot was terrible. And now this was something that I talked to. I think perhaps it was 
Terry and Steve about. Um, I walked to the gas station. You were joking about, <laughs> and you were good about walking to the gas station on one of the episodes of Hive Scum. I don't either the first or the second episode, and it was fine. Like, I don't know, it seemed like a pretty nice neighborhood. Like nobody had a car up on blocks taking the engine out or anything. That, no, that I mean that happened the last of it. There was there was just guys oh, man. Just doing an engine swap in the middle of the street and just <laughs> cars parked on on the wow. middle of the road. Yeah, it was, it well, was that was last time. That wasn't on display this time as far as I saw. Um you mentioned that you didn't, you know, you didn't uh play in the event. If you had, like, what warband would you have used, or did you have one there that you could have maybe played? Or so we were talking a little bit before, but my my personal warband and my personal experience with with Mordheim is just a very terrible Marienburg team. But <laughs> uh, Evan, it's what Evan after the last event as a thank you wrote me like this this long handwritten letter thanking me for letting him stay at my house and sent me the most beautiful warband of, I think they're technically witch hunters. Mm -hmm. but, um, I, I definitely, I had them with me. I just, we couldn't find the time for me. To yeah. Slip yeah. In. So much stuff going on. That's awesome. Cause he also donated a warband that was yes. raffled off. Right. That was super cool. Like yep. really Evan kind. Is, Evan is one of a kind for sure. And he just, He's got a lot going on right now, a lot of projects that, that we definitely can't talk about yet, but his his ability to just say, you know, I'm going to pause this for a second and make sure you guys have... Because I think he also sent some models to Steve just as a thank you for doing the event, and it hadn't yet happened yet, so he yeah, pumped out like 40 models just for fun to give away. So That's crazy. Uh, That's the, productive. Uh, the Witch Hunter Warband he sent you, I, I think you have that pictured on your instagram yes yeah i like just started getting hounds. used to using social media again so my instagram doesn't have much on it <laughs> there are these hounds that their heads are like marbles yes or like a black orb and like boy that's pretty striking and unsettling yeah, yeah. Cool. It, it's so simple and it's it it still creeps the hell out of you just look at the it. little shields that some of them have are really cool too with sort of the Blanchian faces and such. Yep. Which also, I think Evan is just kind of stealing and adopting as his own at this point. Just it, the amount of people that were talking, oh, it's what Evan, that's the, the, the orc face guy, right? And just talking about his <laughs> avatar on Instagram uh -huh. and Instagram Discord. And we're like, yeah, that's him. <laughs> that's the guy. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's cool. Um, do you have like a favorite thing from Nemo now that it's over? Like, did something really stand out? favorite thing from the event i would honestly the dueling podcast idea was the f the funniest thing uh, every time <laughs> oh, yeah. you guys had your podcast set up six feet away from ours and we were telling people just in passing there was fake beef and we were <laughs> <laughs> we were doing ours so that you guys couldn't do yours and then you guys were recording that's amazing we were, i got a picture too i gotta send it to you guys later of uh you guys are talking to cole mm -hmm. and terry's just wrapping up his the stuff and i'm like terry couldn't get cole on the show so he, we called it quits <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing Keep up that kayfabe <laughs> that's yeah that's amazing yeah because i feel i've had a bunch of this recording equipment for a little while with i mean hell the reason i got it was the thought to do something kind of like that at an event right. or whatever to be able to chat with people but with you know covid and all these things mm -hmm. it is much easier to just have through a discord chat record stuff and it isn't quite as important but when i heard i think on your mordheim episode like the fourth episode of hive scum that you were gonna have um some of the recording stuff there it's like i have to bring this stuff and since there's we were driving it was easier it wasn't something like what can you fit on a plane or whatever it's like right, yeah, yeah it's coming along and i'm glad everyone at the event was so positive and welcoming and got us a table and i think just that just kindness and encouragement really went a long way to like yeah let's set it up and then to see you all 
having your stuff and being able to be on that for a little bit like was just really cool and i think yeah that welcoming um encouraging atmosphere it was just really nice and that was that was the goal i know terry had it in mind for sure that we were just going to grab people talk about their boards um i forgot the guy i mean to be honest i wasn't even really on the episode they recorded on uh at the event because i was still trying to make stuff run smoothly Mm -hmm. but we were just grabbing people to have them talk about their stuff yeah, and I, I think that it's cool because with the, all the stuff going on and, like, you know, at least two of us were playing in the event, like, it would have been very easy for it to just sort of be swept under a rug and, like, ah, it's too hard not to happen. And I'm really glad that in both cases it was set up and done. Like, I'm excited to listen to, the like, the stuff from Hopscum when it comes out. And mm-hmm. I actually edited a bunch of the stuff that greg helped record so yeah it, it should be fun yeah it's, it's gonna be well, i don't know if this is part of it it's gonna be your, your 100th episode now too right uh yeah so i think in interestingly i think we have honestly have like 103 episodes but some of them we call bonus episodes for some mm-hmm. reason so like i i don't know what, what it will be numbered or, or yeah, what not but be, yeah yeah, but so we're, it's around the hundred. So that in itself is kind of hard to fathom that we've been recording stuff like this since what, like twenty sixteen? Damn. Greg and I were talking about that. I said I think it's insane. We're gonna hit five, and and you guys are getting <laughs> out. I can't even imagine. <laughs> I don't know what we talked about for all this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going through the backlog. I've got I've got about twenty episodes down so far. So. Damn, well, that's I, impressive. I, I'll, I'll tell you what you're talking about, all right? I'll, <laughs> I'll, I probably wouldn't... St- you didn't start from the beginning, surely. I'm but skipping around. I'm skipping around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because some, of, some yeah, of that stuff's many, not good. Too many episodes. You should just look to see, like, oh, they're talking with such... Yeah, such I see a name, and I click it. Yeah. I mean, I, I drive four hours a day for work regularly anyway, but... Okay. So, well, so I think... Yeah. A lot of the stuff in the beginning was us just talking about stuff and complaining about models and whatnot. And then I think we decided we could continue doing that, but not everyone would want to hear it all the time. So I think that was around when we started streaming on Twitch. And so we still do a lot of that, but most of the actual recorded episodes now are a little... Maybe more substantial, more, more substantial and more talking to people, right? Yeah. right. <laughs> well, it's easier too with Twitch, especially when people have cameras. It's it's a conversation at that point rather than a phone call. It's it's you're in person. You're you're getting mm-hmm. to see that person. Yeah. Very true. Well, so, are you excited to continue to like be involved in more time, or are you wanting to like move on to the next thing? I think I think for sure. I mean, uh, I keep saying this, but we were talking about this. Mordheim at this point is is a term for an aesthetic as a whole. And it's not just people loving a 20-year-old game. It's people loving the the community, people loving the, the kit bash side of it, people loving yeah. the game and and everything that comes with it. So I think, yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm excited for the future of it. To be honest, Mordheim is is a game that I have a love and hate with. The the to hit system is just so painful for me to grasp. <laughs> but yeah, uh, a lot. Yeah, I feel a lot of games, workshop games, it, they can be a bit annoying. Like you just have to roll so many dice. Like you have to roll the hit, but then you just have to keep rolling additional bullshit that eventually it breaks down. Such that in a lot of cases. Most turns is a lot of nothing going back and forth right. until, right. like, luckily, like, oh, then this one, like, a crossbow bolt, like, kills the vampire. And it's like, oh, now all's lost. But, I mean, part of it is just being with good friends and laughing right. about it. But, yeah, it it can be a bit polarizing, I'd rather particularly not if you're not. check a yeah. spreadsheet when I'm playing a game, I'd rather be laughing and just saying, okay, yeah, yeah, hit modifies me a little bit. Let's go. That's, well, that's I would all I say want. My, 
I love everything about Nordheim except for the game. <laughs> exactly. I mean, yeah. Or the things that I like the best about it are not the game. Not that the game is terrible. Like, it has held up well. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely well. a lot to it. The after game, the after game system cannot be beaten. And then everyone, we always joke about it. It's like, why don't we just play a game of just after games? Why don't we just sit yeah. there rolling dice on these charts? That's all nah, the part everyone that wants. That is kind of the most fun part. And the fact that that actually persists between games and like you can feel a sense of progression. But I think your point there about how I feel even if you're not necessarily playing more time, I think it is just sort of more the ethos of being in this uh, almost like 28 grim dark area where it's all about just building this community and enjoying kind of the weirder elements of games workshop stuff but also and others and not being super tied down to a particular rule system or something like that and which admittedly i feel the hive scum podcast is pretty good in that sense like it isn't super focused on any one thing it is talking about different rule systems and just stuff that you're all excited about. And I think that resonates with a lot of people because I think most of us aren't like slaves to one system. And like, we just like to see cool new things and interesting things people are doing with that as like a jumping off point. Right. I mean, that's also kind of how it started when Terry said, Steve and I always joked about starting a podcast and, I know he said that the you know the dice one started at some point and it sucked, but the <laughs> the the whole premise of it was just to talk about stuff we were talking about anyway. Yeah, and our our attention spans don't let us stick with one system for too long anyway. So uh, the fact that we're constantly just churning through games and, and playing stuff, it all kind of still is the same universe of this grim dark, like you were saying that, and that's mm-hmm. all we really wanted. And if we get to talk about it and make other people laugh while we're shit talking things we don't like and hyping up <laughs> the things we do like, then hey, we're gonna keep doing it. Yeah, and that that that's cool. And like for stuff like podcasts and such, like you kind of just have to do it, and like things will work, some things won't, and like you'll kind of find your feet there. Which it sounds like yeah, the Under the Dice podcast was a good way to like try something out and then have it get reborn into right. Right. Hive scum, so a good way to learn that if you sample hate breed music, <laughs> they will cease and desist you. Um, yes, yeah. <laughs> the robots will get you. Uh huh. It's true. It's true. Greg, how much of the uh, the the backlog of hate breed did you get through? Um. So I only listened <laughs> to one hate breed album today, maybe twice. It was, I think, their first studio album. Um. Satisfaction is the death of desire. Okay. Let's listen to that. Okay. And it was hardcore. Yeah. Was, I mean, that's the thing. That's what it hardcore is. Hardcore and like I, I had fun with it. Yeah. Like like I said to you, it's it's nothing special. You just have to respect <laughs> it. <laughs> um, I always felt that they all seemed like they were taking themselves a little too seriously. Like. I don't know, the the band Weekend Nachos, for example, they're also kind of chugging h- tough guyish sound and stuff, but they clearly don't take themselves that seriously. No. Even if some of the songs are serious. Right. Where yeah, no, I, I've seen them I've seen them twice and the second time there were definitely some some real tough guys trying to trying <laughs> to do tough guy stuff at the show and even the band <laughs> stopped and were like, relax. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, good times. Um. Well, so maybe we want. We're we're probably gonna have to edit the sound thing here because, like, we can maybe stop talking about like the. Why don't we ask like one last question pertaining to like a more time thing, and then just and, say thanks or whatever. We can keep bullshitting. Yeah. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Maybe the podcast listeners don't care about hate breed. <laughs> well, I think Maybe. most of them probably would. Yeah. Well, okay, so I'm going to ask something. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, like, talking a little bit about music here, um, what did you think about the soundtrack that was created for the Mordheim event um, by Trey or, like, Basilisk? Like, I thought it was pretty neat. And it was just another thing that made it seem like, wow, this this event's really got things put together. Like, It it definitely added an official-ness to the event that none of us expected. Mm Mm-hmm. Especially Steve getting it pressed through uh, our our friend's uh, label as well, and pretty much destroying it himself now as as under the dice one issue one. But it, I mean, one, I, I'm a huge dungeon synth guy, but the soundtrack is awesome. Trey is awesome. He, uh, we were at Battle Standard the night before our local shop, and I was talking to Gabe while we were waiting for everyone to to organize 16 people getting dinner, which is always a trip. But yeah, right. Trey just, he's in the back of the store, comes over and Trey's a very soft spoken guy, very nice guy. And he's just like, Hey, uh, are you guys going to the Mordheim thing? And we're like, yeah, I helped set it up. He's just like, Oh my God, I'm Trey. I wrote the soundtrack. And I'm like, dude, <laughs> nice to meet you. Amazing. And, he, he, and that was just, that's his vibe. He's just the nicest dude. And the soundtrack is awesome. I I made sure to get the uh, the rare variant the the weird stone uh, green. Yeah, we got both. Yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. Like I yeah, I thought it was super cool, and like the fact that it was playing there, and then that you could get a copy of it, and it was in like one of the best formats available. Cassette, damn. Yeah. yeah. Oh, but it, um... it it just fits really nicely. Yes, we're we're running events um at the dungeon siege uh fest in uh, a couple weeks actually i don't know when it is uh, but and <clears throat> he's he's gonna be there but i was already talking to the guy that's running it and i'm trying to get him to set up like a secret set or like a pre-show type situation oh, that would get be him cool. on it. yeah just that because be awesome he he deserves it I, I was talking to him about it and he's like i just kind of wanted to do this it's nothing you know and I'm like, you just came up with this just for us? Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's he, yeah. We got to chat to them a bunch. He's a super, super cool guy. Yes. And yeah, he he just approached us pretty quick, right when Nemo opened. I guess, um, were maybe somewhat easy to recognize in that we look somewhat similar. And I guess we had do the stream and stuff, but. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it was great to meet him, and I'm sure we'll see him more in the future. But yes, yeah, the absolutely. soundtrack's super cool. You can find it on Bandcamp. And do you know if the other copies of like the cassette stuff, if that's going to be for sale anywhere or just at that next event? Or... I think the goal is when we're at Dungeon Siege, we're going to sell copies, and then whatever doesn't get sold is going to go up. I think Trey has a, a stack himself, so he might be selling okay. it independently as well. And Dungeon Siege is a Dungeon Synth Fest in Massachusetts. Do, do I have that right? Yes. Yep. Northeast okay. Dungeon Siege. That's cool. It's yeah. They do they the event. I think was twice ran twice before COVID, and then during COVID it was just like a Twitch only thing. Mm-hmm. But the whole premise is is just Dungeon Synth. Uh, at night and uh, RPGs during the day. So I think actually Steve's going to be running a Mordheim Chaos in the Streets event, and Terry and I are both going to be running Forbidden Psalm. Uh, okay. Cool. Yeah, that's that's amazing, and it's neat just how there's all this, uh, I guess, cross pollination between different hobbies and interests and such, music, hardcore, RPGs, and Exactly. Mordheim and all that stuff. It, it all lends back into the the term Mordheim at this point has ascended past the game itself. Yeah, and it just sort of fits with the de- do-it-yourself ethos, DIY stuff too as well. Yeah, and and like we were saying, every every one of these dudes either comes from a background of, of hardcore or, or any DIY kind of mindset where if you want it, you're doing it. And yeah, mm-hmm. all comes together. Be the change you want to see. Yep. 
as Matt would say, Nazi punks fuck off, right? Yep, absolutely. <laughs> Forever. Yeah, always. Well, thanks for talking with us about the Nemo 2023 event, Gage. It's been wonderful. Yeah, I'm stoked I got to sneak in. About it. Yeah. Yeah, no. Hopefully we can have you on the podcast again sometime. Like, and yeah, I'm sure this is not going to be the last time. I hope so. Next event. Yeah, that's right. All right. Thanks. All right. So that 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 stage is done. I think that went well. And I, I'll do a little editing. But hey, breed stand in. <laughs> <laughs> it needs um, to stay. Yeah. Wow. That dungeon synth thing sounds great. When is that? Uh, you know, we uh, to be honest, we I hit him up uh months ago and he just got back to me like hey it'd be sweet if you could do this and i said oh <laughs> thanks for the the month notice man uh, <laughs> march 31st to april 2nd yeah and our event is the is april 1st okay so that's a saturday yes shit when's when's adepticon the weekend before it <laughs> like jesus christ like that like man, you are all prolific and all doing all sorts of shit. We we signed up for as much as we could, and it just all happened to be in the same. Yeah, right. Month. Okay, <laughs> that's crazy. I'm actually I'm going to PAX East Thursday and Friday, playing in some events there, flying out Friday night to get to Adepticon to play in uh, the under the dice stuff Saturday with everyone. Holy shit. What, yeah, what are you going to be... Is there stuff at Adepticon like you're particularly excited about? I know you're like doing some Mordheim stuff, but is there any like Ink 28 sort of stuff or anything like that? I think the goal is that Saturday is to kind of when all the Mordheim stuff dies out to just have everyone from the InRust server kind of hang out. Uh, I know we're going to be setting up some tables for people to be sculpting. And there's there's been talk about people just learning sculpting and uh, forget his exact handle. Simpsons Miniatures, I think, said he was he was going to be running a little table for us. And uh, isn't a great hand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I like this. I, I I might be butchering it. I'm sorry if I am. I don't know him super well, but he's he's very friendly, and all his sculpts are insane. Yeah, Tanner Simpson. Okay. <laughs> Simpson miniatures, yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah, so he's gonna be sculpting. Uh, our our uh, our friend Dellen, uh, White Tiger Tablecraft. They're gonna be showing off. I mean, their new company, Bogrot Studios. Him and uh, <clears throat> him and a couple other people. They're gonna be showing off Void Horizon. And I think their goal is to come back to the room mm. after. So it's just, we were joking. We're calling it like the grim dark party, just after mm. hours, just hang out. But it's just going to be people we don't get to see often and hang out with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, it's neat that um, they're like that sort of stuff has like found its own niche at the Depticon. So I yes. know they've like a bunch of Ink 28 sort of stuff has been held there, like Johnny. Yeah did some last year and some stuff before that and like that's cool which make and i think we mentioned this briefly before like the start of this twitch stuff um but it seems like yeah uh, the hive scum like with all your events and stuff it seems like be a good opportunity to just create your own like couple day small convention that's all just like completely focused on the best things in life right in and terms I mean, of the miniature hobby in yeah and that's what we were saying is like if if we could get our friends and kind of hype them up with just all under one name and it's not even for any anyone's benefit other than just bringing everyone up yeah exactly it's just if if adam can teach a class if matt could teach a class if if terry yeah. could teach a class like just to get people involved and get all of our friends under 
under one roof. It's an excuse for us to hang out and it's an excuse for everyone to do what they do best. So I, I keep pushing Steve in that direction. Next year is gonna we're gonna add the, the con tag to <laughs> Yeah, because I think it would be, under the, under would the be really space. cool. Cause right. um a lot of the events like sort of Inc. 28 ish events, stuff that we've been involved in, a lot of them were overseas. And like that, it's cool. Like cool to have the opportunity to do that. But like, it would also be great to continue to be involved and build stuff in the United States, where like it isn't a hu- as huge a monetary investment to um, do that stuff. Like, well, it yeah. took a uh, you know five or six hours to drive up there. Like that's pretty trivial compared to like a $1,000 plane ticket, <laughs> you <Yeah>, know? absolutely. <laughs> and it, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I'm a, a firm believer in, uh, in just running as much as we can and getting people together and, and everything I do are just, we'll, we'll have a magic, the gathering night and it'll turn out to be 12 people and mm-hmm. just overwhelmed in everything that we do. So I, I think it'll bleed through into, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm running events and what's your favorite magic the gathering format who so probably a uh it's legacy isn't it no no i love (laughs) plain cheese oh fuck fuck yeah we have all we had all that stuff our guys our one magic friend i think currently has it all um they're bringing it back they are back. Bringing it back. Yes. So with <laughs> with the popularity of Commander, I I'm always forcing us to play Plane Chase in Commander. That's sick. Yeah. Well, uh, the, I, the I, alternate I, version of Plane Chase, for the record, not the. I don't even remember what Plane Chase is. I'm so there's sorry. like a there's an individual the, deck in the middle of the table. These big cards where you oh, move I between do. planes. It's like and a I world of for everyone. Yeah. yeah. And you roll a dice. You can spend another mana to roll a dice, etc. But it just changes the game. It, it's all about RNG. I, I love just random happenings that you have to adapt to rather than... Yeah, okay. Well, do, what I do you think of Commander as a whole? As a whole? Yeah. I, I think the format is awesome if you preface it with what you're playing. If if I sit down at a table with my $20 deck and you've got your $10,000 Solitaire deck, I hate Commander. <laughs> yeah, so because my experience with Commander so often, which I mean isn't that much, but like I've sometimes played it, like some pickup stuff, and even with the brothers and friends, like God, it it can it can be a grind. But, like particularly if it's like a pickup thing, like you have your trashy deck, and then other people are playing and it's like their excuse to like brag about the stuff that they yeah. have and like up, oh, 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 wait look at what i have here yeah. and like, it's like talking they play their 15 minute turn then it gets to your turn you draw a car like oh play a land all right it's your turn yeah yeah and, uh, yeah so i turn. <laughs> <laughs> like but i do i do like the concept of it but I think there can often be some disconnect between some of the players. Like, but I think, as you sort of mentioned, like if people kind of know what they're getting into, have maybe similar levels, like deck construction, it can right. be pretty cool. But if it's like just like, oh, I got one of the pre-con commander decks and like inserted a few of my favorite rares or mm-hmm. you know cards or whatever, like compared to like a deck that was actually constructed like it it can be pretty bad well that's always the joke too about like the the rule zero turn zero everyone talks about the conversation where you're setting the the power level of your deck everyone always says oh mine's a seven. Oh, mine's a seven but like what does a seven really mean uh-huh. there's no yeah, yeah. <laughs> are you gonna win on turn two is that your seven are you gonna make me sit here for a half hour is that a seven so is it that your your infinite combo only happens seven out of ten games? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I used to have a commander deck that a friend of mine helped me make called Greg Hates Magic. Where <laughs> my commander was Zozu the Punisher, yep. which was a goblin from. Yep. Oh my god! That whenever a land is played, the person who played it takes a point of damage. 
it was just filled with spells to make like to hurt you or to hurt everybody whenever you did anything so it was just <laughs> to make the game less fun for <laughs> but see that's the thing it's all about who you play with because yeah we have a friend who who made uh it's not pauper but it's like aristocrats i, I not aristocrats there's another format that's called where you you're pretty much only using like commons and uncommons yeah but he has he has zozu in that and it's one of the most fun decks i've ever played against it's just it's all about setting yeah. that pre-game conversation mm -hmm. i mean like yeah. everyone hates land destruction everyone hates yeah spells yeah yeah i don't know it's the, the game's just interesting because you can be really into it or not and that can change the experience a everybody lot everybody hates foils <laughs> uh, i don't know about that but it's not true <laughs> They're horrible. They're <laughs> fucking hate them. They're they're the worst. We're not playing fucking Yu-Gi-Oh. We don't. Need <laughs> well, I've become. I'm not as upset with them since you can like double sleeve your decks and they don't curl mm -hmm. as much. But it's like fucking. I don't like. Them. I haven't had bad curling in the last couple of sets. I oh, know so for a while. You, Command unless you get the Zero, secret layers. Yeah, the secret layer is always bad. Oh, so that's what I was going to say. What do you think about Secret Layer? Is that cool, or is it dumb? I think Secret Layers as a as a concept is awesome. I think the false scarcity sucks. <laughs> I think the price point sucks. Uh, especially we were talking about the 30th anniversary. It's just the insanity <laughs> behind that is so, so dumb. Bad. But also, so fucking yeah. bad. Well, Greg ordered the secret lair, the the orc one, and yep. we got it, or he sent it to me because he didn't want it, but we got it, and they didn't even have the Gaz Call Thraka card in it. it just wasn't there. <laughs> and then... <laughs> You um, reached out and got one, I'm assuming. Yeah, we reached out, and they were pretty quick about it. It only took, yep. like, two months or something, and we got a replacement card. <laughs> yeah. But, um... Yeah, I, I, I agree. I think the concept is really neat. But, yeah, it, and honestly, GW does a little bit of that, too. Like, the false sca scarcity shit is so is stupid. It just... Yeah. It, it just seems, like, really scummy, like capitalist type shit that right. well especially i mean gw does it too with like hero units where they crank the price on a hero unit because it's a hero unit mm -hmm. and it's like and just all the stuff like they try to fuck over at local game stores by like not sending them the copies they want yep. so they can have them in the online store or yeah. like to try to get you to buy from their shitty online store so think... they can get all the profits I think nah. their biggest low was the uh, the like the twenty year old was... sculpts that their I forgot what their official title is, but the the twenty year old sculpts that they'll bring back for a limited time. Oh yeah, like yeah, what a like that they're like, would you like a, the last chance to buy these whatever and yeah yeah, and then they they're in resin now instead of metal or whatever. Mm -hmm. And some the... of them have been in metal. Oh and really? Like that, yeah, and like that was cool. I mean, sure, the price point was tar. I was gonna say the price point yeah. sucks, and it's also like, don't you have to wait months on end to get them? Oh, it takes some of them fucking but forever. It's like they re-released, I think, like the old. I'm gonna say old, but the third edition Brian Nelson Orc War Boss, and I yep. think I ordered a few of them, and it was in metal, and like, sure, it was kind of expensive. But, like, some of the stuff was in metal. And, like, that's cool. Like, I don't want to get a resin version of the right, version. Right, right. So like, oh but God. it is true. It's just, like, they just make it such that, like, they say last chance to buy. Like, I'm sure in 10 years they might sell it again. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Not like this is well, really gone. It's just trying to get you to... Yeah, it's cashing in on the FOMO of the experience. Yeah, and... Well, it's kind of tedious they, they and had, Magic had the secret layer thing, the an the thirtieth anniversary secret layer that was like the advent calendar thing. 
Yep. Are you familiar with that? Yeah. It was like such a clusterfuck. Also, I I ordered one and then I think I ordered one and then the site was so bad that I mistakenly ordered two because you you put in the order and it didn't tell you that it succeeded it through like a gateway error. Yep. And then when I finally received it, <laughs> they sent me three of them. Yep. And then I was just I, about to say you probably got four. Yeah, I got I know I only got three of them. And at this point I've only opened one and it had <laughs> two necropotences in it. <laughs> and like it's just like such a dumpster fire like yeah just the, um such one a of dumpster our friends fire at pax unplugged got a uh same thing gateway air only got charged for one ended up getting three boxes <laughs> and it was like oh, okay yeah, and that was okay. the one Ch chrome box was it Mox yes Opal? yeah 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 one, or one, one of, the of one of those done by dan frazier yeah which yeah, was yeah. like is cool right um and so like yeah she was just selling them she's like i don't i don't need this many <laughs> yeah so it's like it was super cool like there were a lot of neat cards and cool art and like i like mm -hmm. the idea that they're like sort of celebrating the art and getting cool artists to do draw art for interesting cards not they're not necessarily like really really powerful cards or whatever and like i yeah. love that but yeah the price point is awful and the fact that if you don't know about it and like miss whatever it is it's gone and i mean they have gotten better about it like some of the initial ones like you had a day to buy yeah I whatever hate that. it's so dumb so let me ask what are your opinions on on the universe is beyond into magic i'm not that excited about them like i like the warhammer forty thousand commander decks like we got those and i we sleeved them up put them in little deck boxes and then put that in its own like little just a second up like i think it's kind of neat in the sense of just playing it as it is but like trying to like then incorporate that into like other decks or whatever got that's a little gone. box here and then in that it has all of the decks and then a deck for a box for all of the the tokens okay. yeah and like greg and i played a game with two of the decks and like it's as just as these like they're they're fun thematic like, they're fun and pretty thematic yeah. to use like i don't know if i i don't think i would really relish like finding all like oh the necron dynasty deck has all these cool like mono black cards that are really or whatever and so as its own thing i think it's cool mm -hmm. but I kind of uh, think, though, if they do too much of this, like, franchise shit, it'll just seem like Fortnite or whatever. Like, who can we pay well, to, like... Yes. Fortnite was in, in Magic, so... In yeah, the yeah, secret, secret, secret layer, layer. bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's happened. And, well, there's a Lord of the Rings set coming out. Yes. Um, and again... Have okay, you seen the prices for those? I did not. Oh, Is it God, a lot? Awful. Yeah, it's pretty okay. much double everything we're used to. Oof, like oof. Street Fighter is cool, but like Street Fighter should not be a magic. Yeah, well, Walking Dead. I mean, everyone that, lost their mind about that. That is stupid. So, yeah, so I don't, I don't like that shit. Yeah, um, I, I logged on to Magic Arena tonight. Or no, I didn't log on. I I got an email from Magic Arena, so that's their online thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a Hot Pockets sponsorship. <laughs> yep. Like, yep. you can get Magic the Gathering Hot Pockets. Like yeah. Well, I saw something about that on Reddit, and uh, I thought it was just someone making a funny meme or something about it, but no, it's... Oh, it's, it's a real, real thing. <laughs> yeah, I don't think they can go much, much lower. I, I feel like the Fortnite one was the, the ultimate... That uh, I think is like the. Lord I mean, at the... least it's just secret layer. Like it, it would be particularly bad if they like 
Well, but in the same sense, like, I don't want, like, Marvel. Oh, God. I don't, I don't, yeah. You know, I, it just... Well, the Lord of the Rings I, set is is a standard set. That's going to be... Wait, is it actually world. standard? I believe so, yeah. Oh, fuck. Well, so so everyone's it, saying that's going to be the new wave. So that's, after that, it, it's like really... Every cool. year, they'll have one standard set that's, like, Doctor Who. Yeah. I mean, so the Lord of the Rings thing, someone found a bunch of the cards in, like, a landfill or some shit. Yep. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> and, <laughs> um... <laughs> people and there are some pictures of the cards and stuff and i mean it looks like they put they put in a lot of effort so i mean it right. will probably be cool and like lord, of the, rings yeah, for lord overall, of the rings is cool perhaps and it's better than some just yeah. because it's like generic it's a fantasy, fantasy in a way yeah, yeah. Like, it's still on brand you can still have fucking goblins and whatever yeah. <laughs> so i think it'll be ultimately mostly fine but it's a slippery slope and and like because they, they've done a good job of having their own ip and cool recognizable things like they don't need to right do right. that yeah, they've, they've done a it pretty seems. good job the only thing that i think is strange so like they have a fair amount of lore and story and stuff but it's like where do you even learn that like where even is it? Like they used to have books. They don't really have it's, books. Like is it uh, literally just reading the stories on their website? Is it's that it? The website, yep. And then there's what they put like a little star on the cards that are important into the lore. So like Wait, seriously? Yeah, I think What? My my friend Lucian is gonna yell at me for, for sure are you about kidding this. Me? He's the big lore guy. Yeah, so there's there's ones a that'll star. Where I is think the it's, star? I don't I'm gonna have to figure it out but there's <laughs> on the bottom bottom corner oh fuck like, you're right so there are stars sometimes and so that's i don't think yeah, i ever knew that it'll say like story relevant or like story important or story something on the <laughs> card so whoa like when a character gets killed off or especially like war of the spark was a big set for our friend circle we we drafted that a ton we played that a ton and i know like the card with like gideon on on rakdos uh, that's like one of them. It's like the cards that tell the story are the the ones that have it. But yeah, yeah you're right. It's impossible to to follow. I have to I have to wait for my friend to listen to the the Vorthos cast to then tell me the story. Of In the some card sense, I always and it, I guess it's probably not really true, but I always kind of like it. Almost gave like older games workshop lore stuff how they would like give you some lore but it was more just like a cryptic sentence here there that like gave you the idea like a slight hint at something but didn't really explain it and to me magic has always been a little bit of that in that there were some characters or cards or whatnot that seemed like oh there must be something behind this but then i kind of assumed there isn't but that's kind of neat kind of cool well, so for, but how, how long have it, you been playing Magic, roughly? Uh, pretty much. Well, maybe what was say, the set that like so the Gate first Crash set was that... Gate Crash was really the first set that I I dove into. Uh, I played that for about four years and then kind of got out of it. And then once Commander, the first Commander set came out, I kind of got back in. Well, so for that. we started playing a little bit in like high school or something, maybe around Apocalypse. Yep, I think it was uh, Apocalypse of, or Invasion. One of the best art sets, by the way. Yeah, the, and the gold border cards, nothing will ever beat those. Yeah, and so we played it a little bit. Didn't got some cards, some shitty starter decks and stuff, and then later. That might have even been in, like, middle school. When Kamigawa came out, that was when we started actually playing. Then right after that was the first Ravnica set. Mm -hmm. And, like, we played it a bunch. And then I remember when Greg and I started graduate school at the University of Pittsburgh, one weekend we drove home and we bought a booster box from the first Zendikar set, the original Zendikar set. And in the first print run of that, they had their 
legendary treasures or whatever it called the thing that sort of inspired all the masterpiece bullshit yep that has since happened and there's so much of it now that you can't keep track of any of it but yeah. um then that first booster box we opened <laughs> we opened a mishra's workshop in it yep and like at the time i think it was maybe worth worth like yeah four hundred dollars or something and now like due to commander and i guess that it's on the reserve list and all that fucking shit it's like now thousands of dollars right fucking shit looking on Mm pgplayer.com uh heavily played version they're selling is selling for two thousand three hundred ninety nine dollars yep yeah no it's a lot it's a lot but i (laughs) I just remember because I remember at the time looking around online and there were people on the discussion boards and stuff saying like, like, oh, I just got such and such. And then there were people saying like, no, they're not actually doing that. That's not actually a real thing. And because I guess at that time they didn't really. It wasn't a thing they were. Yeah, they weren't really like. They weren't trying to sell the set with right. that gimmick. And so yeah, in that sense, it was a fun thing they did. And it was really cool. Like they, yeah, yeah. The, people got like the dual lands and all sorts of stuff. And like really neat. It was a neat time in the game. It was, I guess, the first time they, pr- they printed new, what do they call this? the fetch lands and whatever like it was kind of like a big deal and yeah i distinctly remember people like no they're not actually doing that like you're just lying and it's like and i guess we knew firsthand that i guess they're not lying like people probably did (laughs) yeah um but so yeah that was neat yeah i kind of crazy that magic cards sell for as much as they do and now it's like an investment yep yep (laughs) We actually, I, I bought some reserve list at, at Nemo from a friend that showed up just to play Magic in the back. So that's great. It, it, it is an investment. Yeah. I recently yeah, I, got um, a card from the reserve list. It was a few months ago. Um, Triangle of War, I think it's called. It, it was. It's a card that Ian Miller, who was like one of the old school 40K artists, very distinct, yeah. awesome art style. His like, some of the background work was in like wizards and that old animated film and stuff and i i guess i thought he had done some early art but i didn't really know what cards were and when i found out that was one of them it's like i have to buy it like it yeah. I, it's cheap i think because it's on it's not yeah. that good but three, three bucks yeah yeah it's not that good but it's like cool that they did he did art for the game and i guess in right. what what was the set that they it recently came out that everyone went nuts for one of the masters sets where they had they reprinted god what's it called imperial seal <laughs> imperial oh. seal and all that shit the the double masters two or whatever that whatever it's called in yeah, that yeah. they they the coolest thing about that set was they brought back a lot of the old artists and had them yes. do variant art so like Ian Miller did maybe like variant arts for like three cards and like man they're cool yeah yeah um so that was the coolest thing about said set and yeah, so yeah I mean kind of bringing back to what you were saying too about like the different formats of magic you can play commander with and i've seen decks where people are like i love ian miller art so i'm gonna make a commander deck yeah. that's only ian miller art <laughs> well like in the new comic very good <laughs> yeah in the new comic yeah, right. was set that came out yoji shinkawa did the art for satoru umazawa or whatever and like we yeah. growing up like we always yeah. loved all that artwork from like the Metal Gear Solid games and stuff like that. So it's like, well, I am going to make a commander deck with that with him just because like the artwork's cool. Yeah, exactly. I mean, um, that's that's the 
the only way I still play Magic. My yeah. my favorite deck is Throwmock the Insatiable, which is just like a ten dollar or a ten cent card. It's just terrible. You you sack a bunch of creatures to make his power. He's he's got the Jund Devour X. So I just eat a bunch uh, of goblins and make yeah, yeah he's an yeah, awful I, I awful okay, commander. Okay. But that's just like how I like to play. Just just theme very silly. I'll just well, keep like, to Watsy to print more Hellions. Yeah, a while ago I when I was in San Diego in my postdoc, I made a Volrath mm-hmm. Volrath EDH deck and it's like, yeah, I'm gonna get Volrath and I'm gonna get Volrath Stronghold and Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like all that shit. It's cause it's like It's gonna be cool when you play it and then that's that's and it. It's kind of, <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, but I don't know. The only I've started to sort of play Arena, Magic Arena, a little mm-hmm. bit, and I've actually played for a while now. Actually played Standard again. Like I would never play it physically or whatever, but right. just right. free to play, playing it on the app. It's kind of fun. Like I'm more familiar yeah. with the cards than like otherwise I wouldn't be familiar with anything. Mm-hmm. Right. Um. I like playing Brawl every now and then. I'll I'll dip my toes into the Brawl when is on Arena. When is Commander actually coming to Arena? Like I heard they, a rumor. They can't make money on it, so I don't know if it'll ever. Yeah, I I they well, I think... they probably could, but it would be just insane price point for you to get the cards you want. Oh yeah, the, well they should be. Well, I mean, even like the Pokemon card game has done better than Magic. Like at least in that. Yeah. Each pack you buy, there's like a little code where you can get a a booster pack in like the digital version. It's like yep. Pokemon can do that. Like, why can't you do it, Magic? And yeah. then they still They'll, have they do mag- it with pre-releases, right? And that's it. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. And they, <laughs> um, and then they still have Magic on. Have you ever played Magic Online? So, yeah, I oh. I made. Oh, fuck. I made a. What do I have? I have a uh, a Kozilek commander deck on it, just all colorless cards that mm-hmm. I, I don't even want to say how much money I spent on it, and probably played it twice and it, never touched MTG. The interface ever. is so bad. Yeah. Like the few times that I played it with one of my friends, like I made some commander deck. I don't know what it was. It was bad, mm-hmm. but. I I think I lost every game and I lost them because I ran out of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because like oh, you're shit. fighting you're fighting the controls of the game to play the game. <laughs> it's like oh shit, it was my turn to pass the activation. To, like, yeah, just yeah. so bad. And I, I remember like, trying to learn how to copy a spell while I had it on the stack in response to myself was like. Yeah, I, I feel guess... like I'm learning Excel spreadsheet. Like it was so hard to to figure that out, and fucking. I bad. feel like that's why it's not not popular at all. Well, I think people so so people certainly use do play it. And when mm-hmm. physical cards were more of a thing, I think a lot of the people who were big into playing in tournaments and stuff, they would use that as a way to play the game more and play against more people and learn the cards and stuff. But like, holy shit! You would have to spend the money to do that. Yeah. Like, yeah. God. And then you would then also buy the fit. Just no. Fuck that. Yeah. But especially you're paying the same price point for yeah it's fake so cards bad. that you are for real cards. It's like, <laughs> why at this point? Yeah. So yeah, it's it's an. They're at an interesting point. They're celebrating the art more than ever, which I love. Yes. But it's also come um, with boss. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's what we were talking about, me being a huge RPG head. The, the D&D set that they mm-hmm. have. I love yeah, the, the yeah. monster manual arts that they have. I love those. Well, and they friend just got me the Tiamat one, the special secret yeah. layer one. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so they just... In the recent D and D set that everyone sort of hated because it was like 
Commander Met, or I don't remember what it was called, but it was Commander Legends. Oh, that's but, it. Yeah, but the D and D, and like everyone hated it, or or a lot of people hated it because they thought it was going to be something different. Well, in that they introduced a mechanic called like initiative or something that was just supposed mm-hmm. to be a stupid commander shit. And then it overtook Legacy, and they recently... Yep. And yep. they think they just banned at least one of the yeah. cards now. So it's like, Jesus. Yeah. They can't well, that even. was uh, Ikoria, too. I loved Ikoria. Yeah. Uh, the companion mechanic. But, like, they had to ban one day one, because they knew it was going to break Commander. They had to change how how companion worked, because it was broken. Loris took yep. over Vintage. It was just like... <laughs> Guys, yeah, come on. like almost all of them have been banned now. Yeah, yeah. In most format. <laughs> so it's like, oof. Oh, and then in that same... I wasn't really paying much attention then, but they also banned the Planeswalker too. Uh, yeah, oh, Oko? Oko. No, that was, well, that was previous. <laughs> oh, was that... Oh, wait, that was... Yeah. You're right, you're right. That was... That was thrown... Of Eldurant. Of Eldurant, yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so, I just... I remember when we were playing Magic a bunch back in, like, Mirrodin and Kamigawa and stuff, it didn't seem like they banned stuff that frequently, but maybe it was just me not really paying that much attention. But now it's, like, every set, ban, ban, ban. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Which, I mean, whatever, it's fine. If... Some of those I'm cards. I'm surprised probably... GW doesn't have a ban list. To be honest, mm-hmm. I've had this talk with people before, but like the the leagues of Otan, the the space yeah. wars came out and they had to immediately change the codex. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm surprised they didn't say, "Oh, we actually were banning the commander." Sorry, or like the yeah, <laughs> we're banning this hero unit. Yeah, it's it's. I guess it's just the game matters so little. I don't know that they have. I mean, there certainly is a GW competitive scene, but like mm-hmm. most think. of their games weren't really designed to be that, or right. I would argue right. were not because they're bad games. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, Blood Bowl is maybe the best. Yeah, I I have not. Yeah, I have not dipped my toes into that. It's you good. Play a game that lasts. Fucking four hours. <laughs> I did just back um, Mork Bowl, the Mork Borg Bowl. Uh, Bowl. Yeah. So that'll probably be my first Blood Bowl experience, I guess. I'm not a sports guy by any means, so. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm the Blitz Bowl, like the Barnes and Noble yep. Blood Bowl game, it's quite good. Yeah. Like, it's actually very good. I always try and punish my my friends that love football to play tabletop games with me. I'm like, look, it's football. We could talk about something the same here. It never happens. <laughs> yeah, but it's pretty good. But yeah, Blood Bowl, particularly if you're new to it, it like the games are long. Yeah. And sometimes a bit arduous. And like it can sort of like a lot of GW's older games, it can be really punishing. If you're not, yeah, I really can. don't know how to mitigate the random bullshit. I remember seeing <laughs> the Blood Bowl players at Adepticon in the morning, mm-hmm. like signing up, getting ready, and like, mm-hmm. we would go do our events, test out games, come back, and they were still there playing. So yeah, I believe it. <laughs> yeah, it's still. It's all playing. about risk management, Blood Bowl, because mm-hmm. how things work. You need to make sure there are actions you can do that there are, there's no risk. And so you typically have to make sure you do all of that before you make, make the, the meaningful roles. The meaningful things that... Fail, if you fail a test, your turn ends. Yeah, <laughs> so, like so... You could immediately decide, I am going to throw this ball, and you fumble the roll, and then your turn is over. And like all the all the rest of your players did literally nothing. Did nothing. Did yeah. Nothing. Yeah. That sounds like an awful mechanic. Too. <laughs> yeah. So like it, it's kind of weird. Like so you you have to just plan a, a certain way, but like you can't just do the exciting things because 
then like you you just will be punished like brutally right <laughs> but yeah i you can't translate that to other games like in mordheim if your guy failed to jump you oh sorry you just can't play the rest of this turn yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay cool i'm out <laughs> <laughs> nah, they wouldn't have done. My, my models wouldn't have done anything anyway. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> well, talking about RPGs, have you played Cyborg? Yes, a lot. Oh, uh, really? Cool. A real lot. Like, yeah. I, mean, I obviously backed that shit. Did you, mm-hmm. you probably backed it too? Yep. Yep. I backed it at the level where I could get an extra book, so I could have one, and the players could have one at the table. Because okay. Nothing okay. You you have worse than checking edition. a rule and then giving it to someone else and then waiting and then checking a rule. Do you have the special edition book? I do. Okay. Is yeah. the cover bullshit rubbing off? No, mine is in perfect condition somehow. Did we ever contact them about that? No, I, we should, I guess. You should, because they will definitely replace it. My, I got a Morkborg book for, for a friend from the Kickstarter originally, and it... Uh, one of them just came, like, they hit it with a bat, and they swapped that out in a month, tops. Because I the, feel... the new one came, they... Or before I even sent mine out, they, they already sent one. So. I feel that, like, seeing the more for the book, and just was what got me excited about, like, role-playing games and stuff again, like, because mm-hmm. it's just such a cool design, interesting themes... And how like every table is kind of world building and such, right, like just right. so cool. And I feel I wish like Games Workshop or some of their stuff could be more like that. Which admittedly, some of the more time, like the more time rule book is cool because there is so much world building and interesting illustrations and stuff. Which I feel a lot of Games Workshop's more recent stuff is a lot more sterile looking. Yes. And, well, they'll, they'll have creative. it, but it'll be in a separate book that you have to pay $50 for. <laughs> like, yeah, right. Our, our Age of Sigmar campaign, we've been ripping through. Our Everyone's kind of got their own narrative of where the game's taking place, but I specifically wanted my guys... It's like mine is in the old world. Yeah, well, that's, that's <laughs> Steve, because he refuses yeah. the new lore, but I really like the Thondia aesthetic, the lore, everything about the, the beast lands, and Mm-hmm. Uh, you can only get it if you buy the separate book, and it's like, well, yeah. I I guess. Uh huh. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know all the realms. Like, well, yeah, I, I, I don't what either. Army are you playing? I'm playing Cities of Sigmar. So oh. because I had a just a ton of Empire from back in the day. I don't know. I feel like the whole neighborhood gave me their Orcs versus Empire box because I have no joke, probably 200 horsemen just in a box. I don't know where they <laughs> came from when I when I rediscovered the game. Yeah, I have them all. I've got like 12 cannons, which I know weren't mm-hmm. easy to get. So I cut all the square bases <laughs> off, put them on new bases, started learning to paint again. So but I wanted them really like beast land based. So a lot mm-hmm. of them are all eagle heads and, and uh, elk, elk horns everywhere. And But yeah, to lean into that, I needed to buy a, a different boat uh-huh. to actually try and establish it. Round based is all the way. Round based is yeah. for life. Yeah. Yeah, no, but I, I don't know. I think some of the RPG stuff, that's how a book should be put together. And I feel the um, Cyborg, Morkborg, like, really, really cool. And like, I they're... will say, those games have... Um, I was actually just talking to David Hoskins about this, but someone in their inner circle is just a wizard with websites. And they have like Scumberther for more <laughs> Yeah, that's great. It's perfect. That's the so Cyborg great. one is even better because is it? I it has. That. Yeah, you can you can make a character. Uh, you have the option to not even have it have a class, so you could just be a character that <laughs> sucks all around. Mm-hmm. Uh, then it has one that will give you a hook, and then there's one for NPCs. So you can just generate oh, kind great. of a whole adventure in six clicks. Write it down, and then you're good to go. Yeah, that 
like it's just really class act cool it i i like how it isn't very rules heavy Mm -hmm. and so it's just more into like the role playing stuff which admittedly you know we've talked about it in the pod our podcast and stuff in streams periodically in the past because even in a lot of this like the ink 28 and sort of narrative warhammer stuff Mm -hmm. a lot of people are just so bothered like oh but what are the rules where do you get the rules and i mean it makes sense because that's how you get into 40k and such it's uh, all about the game and like what's the codex and is there a new codex which is better or whatever but oftentimes as you like kind of pull back away from that um most of those like events and stuff like the rural system it just doesn't matter that much like it's about the people involved the narrative you're trying to play like and it gets closer to being a role-playing thing and it's just like well well what do you think we should have to roll to have this accomplished and like if you don't have to have the rules like get in the way of a good time or a good story and it ends up more just being like well it's kind of a combination of different rule sets but it's closest to like necromunda because that's the rule set we played the most with Mm -hmm. again i feel that's kind of my thought is that if you're trying to run some narrative thing like you don't really have to be too concerned about the rules but you might as well probably just use a system that you're fairly familiar with (laughs) yep i i don't remember what company it was but at pax unplugged i got a sticker that just says system doesn't matter just play and like mm-hmm. that sums up everything i want from games yeah well in so all of my role playing game stuff i never played that much dnd like when we we bought the third edition books when they were released dnd third edition when we were like in middle school mm-hmm. and like hardly played that and then in graduate school, I was part of a short fourth edition campaign, and everybody hated fourth edition for whatever <laughs> reason. Because um, it was cool I, to hate fourth edition, that's why. Yeah, it was the cool thing to do. <laughs> um, and then I played a bunch of one shots for the fifth edition, and like, I didn't read the fifth edition rules, but there are so many rules and so much min max and you can do but every time i fucking played it was like none of those rules mattered it was all right i'm in combat like roll your d20 well i rolled a an eight that's not good enough okay i didn't do anything or like all right combat again roll your d20 oh you got a 15 that's good enough roll your d6 for damage like there are tons of rules and like none of it ever mattered yeah yeah. And like it ultimately turned out like when I was running Morkborg sessions, it's like none of like all the rules that D and D had, like the shit didn't matter at all. You're essentially playing the same game, but the book is an eighth of the other one and it's yes. the same experience. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean I know there are some people that fucking love Min Maxin and want to make right. the ultimate character. But like With the fantasy stuff that I'm more interested in, like, I don't want to make a superhero that, like, can, like, kill God. Well, because in some sense, being, like, really crunchy and into, like, like how the system works or whatever, that seems a bit counter to, like, role-playing. Like, trying to get into a role and be some, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I always force my players if, like, for instance, this kind of just came up, one of the uh, the feats for I don't remember the specific name of it. I think it's just marksman, but it's a you take a minus five on your attack roll to do ten more damage, just whatever when okay. using a crossbow. And I said that's cool, but why does your character know that? What what happened for them to have that feat? That's not just something. Oh, I leveled up and I get this thing. It's like no. <laughs> uh-huh. Tell tell me why they're. They're shittier aiming, but they're going to do more damage. And then you come up with a narrative from it from like that. So a crunchier system can be beneficial. Like an uh, uh, excuse to yeah, yeah. come up with more. Yeah. But no, if you're, if like, like Greg was saying, if you're the paladin that kills gods because 
it's what he does on Tuesday afternoon. No, I don't, I don't care about that. I don't want to play in that game. I, <laughs> that is that's so boring. Because <laughs> in some sense, that's a lot more like a like a JRPG or like the, the video game stuff yes, where exactly. RPG isn't really about role playing. It's about the crunchy system. Yeah. The flashy bullshit. It's the, the and... South Park World of Warcraft episode. You're going to go kill boars for <laughs> seven hours, and then we're going to come back, and then we're going to fight the boss. And, oh, if you lose, we're going to go kill seven more hours worth of boars. It's like, <laughs> yeah. that's not the tabletop RPG I want to play at all. Yeah. <laughs> now, mind you, not like when I, the Mork Borg stuff, I fucking sucked at role-playing, too. <laughs> yeah, like I wasn't good at doing it, but I, I still um, think like, that's more, more interesting. Almost no rules didn't make the experience less than when I played D and D and didn't make yeah. any of the rules. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you can't be bad at role playing. It's just your level of comfort. That's that's fair. That's fair. I think the more you do it, and like if you have like better GMs or like a GM that can sort of read the group and like adjust it to like get the people to be more engaged and such. And right. I think, yeah. And, and it's just like, if you have a regular group, you becoming familiar with that group and being more comfortable. So I, I think it, it is just a something that yeah. you, it grows with you. Like you grow with the experience. Our, our Friday game has been going for six years now. And still there's, there's a player that just not to call him out or anything, but he just, that's not his vibe. He doesn't want to sit there and talk in a valiant voice or do cool mm-hmm. things. He just says, my character does this. And then, that's all he gets out of it, and it doesn't ruin anyone else's experience as long as you're you're doing it, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Six years. That's incredible. Yes, I know. <laughs> yeah, damn. Yeah, same same core group too, pretty much. That's, that's amazing. Are you running it or are you playing in it? I'm running it. Yeah, I. Oh, shit. Yeah, I'm I'm deemed forever GM. It's just <laughs> I'm I'm cursed with that role. It seems. <laughs> oh, so then the question: Do you play this in person? Yep, or... we we've played almost every Friday night for for six years. I think the longest we've ever gone was five weeks without playing. Damn. Do you play anything like through like Discord or chats like this, or is it primarily? We did. The, so that group played through Discord when COVID was a thing, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and we all hated it. I, okay. Especially, I bought into like the Roll Twenty experience, the package. I bought tokens. I bought this and that. Okay. And it was it was a second job on top of a second job. It was like, yeah, all right. I'm doing all of this work to to make it an experience on a computer when I should be focusing on like, the actual theater, theater yeah. of the mind. Yeah, yeah, so that, yeah. That sucked. Um, no, I I do I do play uh, like one shots every now and then online, but especially like with Nemo planning and everything, all that kind of went out the window. I think yeah. we have plans to play Cyborg pretty soon. That was what the, the talk was at the event. Well, because I kind of just think, like, I feel it would be neat to, if trying if you're trying to host like some narrative miniature event or something, to like lead up to it with different people who are participating at different places to, if you could somehow incorporate uh, role playing thing to like better incorporate like why your inquisitor or whomever is like why are they going there do they have interactions with some of the other characters and I think stuff like that could be cool we, to, like, we talked about hone that. the narrative more yeah we talked a little bit about that on Hive Scum that's like that's my dream is just to have that it starts as an RPG it leads into uh just confrontation yeah it leads into into well into like kill team and then from there it'll go into a different game and we can hop systems but with the same narrative and then mm-hmm. battle fleet gothic that all the way up until that baby that's what we need and then we'll drag you guys into twilight imperium and then we'll yeah <laughs> <laughs> or, i mean there's the gw twilight imperium clone what's it called oh i have uh, lost i have it, it. 
I have it up in the guest it's bedroom. It's Fantasy Flight released it. Yeah, it's like it's a Twilight Imperium type game, but it's, but it's much GW more. Product? It's Fantasy Flight games they when still had the they license. made they had the license with Games Workshop, um, and it's like I think it's only a four player game. But it's much more focused in combat than like Twilight Imperium has a lot, a whole bunch of different things. And combat is like some dice rolls, but it's right. like not. So when you guys were talking to Steve about it, and I was just angrily typing in chat that Twilight Imperium mm-hmm. is actually a good game. The uh, <laughs> the the thing I couldn't really express in that is like my group when we play. Yeah, they're all they're all older guys, like fifty plus, all tool makers from an old job. Mm-hmm. They hate the idea of role playing in like D and D, but for whatever reason, in Twilight Imperium, when it comes time to like the agenda phase or whatever mm-hmm. talking, I kind of squeezed in a little bit of role play of like, well, you know, like my faction's been doing this all game, so your faction should have no problem. Blah blah blah. Uh-huh. And it's just like it reminds me of that, like uh, in Episode One in Star Wars, just that like. The, the gathering of all the different politicians every mm-hmm. time because every one of them just becomes a, a five star general and then they have to start talking about well what their faction did and blah 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 and that's it's, right. it's just funny how this level of role play can be broken down into different games and like who's role playing in Twilight Imperium that's insane but one so actually hour, I think uh, a lot of people do do that though at least to some extent and try to be like what their race is because like each of the races do have the flavor sort of mm-hmm. text to try to and I right. think that's neat w- what what edition have you played I played I played third just once and then I played okay. at this point 10 12 mm-hmm. games of fourth and because we had talked briefly on the other episode but like I think the game is super cool. Like really well designed, but third was one of my favorite gaming experiences. Mm-hmm. Yeah, hell, like I my bachelor party was playing Twilight Imperium with yeah, a bunch of friends. Yeah. Like I, it's so cool. But I don't know the the tiles, the agenda tiles we mentioned briefly, like in the core, like base third game, like which we gave to Steve. Yes, there's, I saw. <laughs> there's no incentive to not just take a, the eighth tile Imperium, which just gives you two victory points, or the initiative, maybe it's called, that just allows you to pick the first tile next. Yeah, the speaker and or whatever, yeah. As a result, it it sort of defeated the purpose and like you stopped like trying like what would my faction do or what would be cool or like Right. And it's just like, I just need that because that's the only sure way to get the points and someone else is going to be getting it. And it like, it took away a bit of the magic of like the first maybe three times they played it when it wasn't so focused on, well, I just know that I need this because this is how you will win. Right. right. And I think because they had a bunch of expansions that you could like swap out certain tiles. Mm -hmm. And I suspect some of those kind of change that and yeah, towards they, they that and i imagine fourth the fourth edition they've kind of balanced and taken all they learned through those expansions and such and now it's not just like this tile is always the best the, the only choice you would ever make and i right. think if there isn't just one obvious choice it's just so, so much of a better game because, like, you can think of, like, well, this is my strategy. This is what I'm going to try to do. And then you can adjust that as things happen. Yeah. Because, I a, like, yeah. At a certain point, it does come down probably around, like, the last turn or so when it's uh-huh. visible that it's going to be the last turn. That's when everyone kind of jumps for the speaker token to get to be able to pick the first initiative. Yeah. But it's it's a fault of the game because it goes by... Scoring goes in initiative order. So in our play group, okay. at least, there'll always be four of us because we normally play about a six player, seven player game. The first four people all would have won if they got the speaker token. Okay. Yeah. It, when you're that number two spot man, nothing feels worse. 
Yeah, yeah. You're like, I, it just came down to just this guy got it before me, and there, there's no mechanic that could have helped me. It's just that's what it okay, is. Okay, so that yeah, that's a bit of a shame. Yeah. But like, still, if it if it's still to the point that it's only like eighty percent of the game is still like not always have to be that, and it's choosing what you th- then that still is good much better like because i still would like to buy the fourth edition and play it because i still think it was one of my favorite board game experiences playing it and how it's such an expansive like long game but how it's just so engaging the whole time right the they also the expansion for fourth edition Mm -hmm. adds so many new mechanics that really change up what you're doing on your turn because every time mm-hmm. you explore a planet or whatever you're getting a whole nother currency you're getting a mm-hmm. whole nother huh. card system on top of that so well now and here's do... the true question did you get okay. the twilight imperium roll and write game the roll and write no uh, but you're familiar with it Did i am familiar with it yeah time. i saw i saw someone play it at pax east and it just did not look like my vibe i did pick I up the twilight imperium it role-playing game though is there is that a newer one is that because i think there was one before uh i don't i don't know any of the other ones yeah just the the newest one that came out i've got two of the the soft pamphlets for it and a pdf yeah but i i would like to play twilight imperium again but i i hate how big the boxes are like (laughs) Which, I mean, I th- it, the new one's a little bit better, but the old one is just like a coffin. Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, still, it still is. It's still. Well, so, it's but you think, the expan- you think the expansion's good? Yes. Because I know the shut up and sit down people weren't too thrilled with it. Yeah, they, they weren't. I feel like just the expectations of what it was going to be is why mm-hmm. a lot of people were bummed out with the expansion. But I think so many people like, don't play enough Twilight Imperium to, like, need to even get that expansion. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, it's like, if you didn't have a, like, really know all the other ins and outs of the other game, like... Yeah, you don't really need it. It it might be a bit much, and... But, yeah, well. Everyone always sees, because where where I play, uh, we make it a whole thing. People, we get kind of catering set up, essentially. We'll get multiple meals throughout the day. We actually played poolside one time, and <laughs> which was a very bad idea. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. The the thing is, the people's like people's wives come over and they're seeing this game that's sprawled across this huge table, and they're like, "How do you remember all the rules?" And you're like, "It's not. None of the mechanics in that game are terribly yeah, hard. Not it's just it's hard. A ton it's of them. Yeah. Yeah." yeah. And there's a ton of things, but they all kind of work the same. Like once you play around, like it, it all kind of just flows together. Right. I feel for me personally too. I'm like the stenographer of the whole group. I have like uh, star logs, I call them, and I actually type like, "Oh, oh Greg cool. attacked Adam on this turn, and he said he wouldn't have." And I'll and then like ten minutes <laughs> later, I'll be like, "Eric totally said he was going to make this trade, but he backed out at the last second. But That's everyone always thanks me for like making the game more enjoyable but in reality it's just me staying on track because my ADHD yeah. is just on fire the whole time I'm playing that game so me typing it out is a way for me to stay engaged uh-huh and okay. I'm like yeah it's totally for you man don't worry but I'm like all right so Greg <laughs> did do that trade I need to remember that <laughs> that's, that's funny that's funny <laughs> well uh maybe we should call this to a close I feel We've been going on for a while, but it's, it's been awesome. really fun chatting. Yeah, guys. Honestly, I'm I'm bummed we didn't get to chat too much in in uh, person. I could have punished you more about other games, but <laughs> we got to play Root now. Now that I own it. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's it's really good. Play through the. Have you played? You played it once, like yep. in person, so you mm-hmm. have a sense of how it goes. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cause it's great. You're. I think you have to make a account, an online account through whatever the company is to play online. Um, Easy enough. Yeah, it's. I like it a lot. 
we'll have to play a game. Get a game in. Yeah. Well, so, all right. Yeah, we'll... thanks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, yeah, thanks for joining us. Thanks, everyone else. If anyone here is listening in, stay, he stay safe, stay healthy. Keep on enjoying the hobby, whether it's board games, magic, Mordheim, whatever. <laughs> Oh, RPGs. Yeah. All the above. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Until next time, everybody. Over and out. See ya. Thanks, dude. Thanks, boys.